Okay, so first of all, uh, thank you to Hori and uh, David of uh, setting up this, this environment. And uh, as Torsten introduced and we started, I, I believe there's a, a lot of value, not only for the people who are today the recipients of this information. We, as those who work uh, regularly since many years in 3GP on developing specifications for the media industry, really benefit from the exchange of information with the colleagues who uh, implement with, in whatever framework. And uh, so it should not be one directional. Yeah, we, we hope that this is kicking off a process for feedback. Uh, specification 3GP are uh, final at a release date, but they are never perfect. So there is always an ability to fix specifications. Then there's multiple processes, for example, you can create change requests, you can create new work items and so on. So um, I, we hope to make this a more regular exchange with developers and the open source environment is really probably one of the opportunities to have an open discussion. So let's continue doing this. So now particular one topic that we started in release 17 was doing 5GMS via EMBMS. And that sounds cryptic, but I have a bit of uh, background here. So the slides are developed together with Richard, um, who was also very instrumental in developing this technology in release 17. We completed this a couple of weeks ago. Um, so what is the motivation why we did this? Basically, we have LT-based 5G broadcast defined in the Etsy spec. 5G Mac is a bit of the owner of this one. Um, and that is uh, based on 23246 and 26, uh, 23246 and 23346, which are the, um, the uh, SA2 and SA4 uh, specification. Um, and what was done, LTE-based 5G broadcast is basically built to address the 5G requirements for broadcast, but it's built on top of the uh, enhanced packet core uh, and not on 5G core. So it's not a native 5G technology, but um, as the, um, the, the requirements are fulfilled for broadcasters through the 4G, it's considered to be as a part of the 5G context. And as I said, it's an important technology in the 5G Max, including the reference tools, uh, to provide broadcast services. Um, so the, the combination of LT-based 5G with 5G services and uh, the 5G framework is important. And this is important to remove some of this confusion. Is this a 4G or 5G technology? But also to make this technical gap bridging. Um, and I believe the both are uh, relevant. And the latter one is something we addressed in the work item, and it's not uh, rocket science, but it, uh, it has a couple of aspects that are addressed. The basic idea that was put forward is that a, a content provider may leverage 5G unicast, 5G media streaming, 5G broadcast, and 5G built devices to build efficient, innovative applications. And that is supported by well-defined network reference points and client-side APIs. Uh, you can do different deployment and collaboration models, and there's different flavors exists of what is referred to as hybrid service. And I get to there in a second. So now building on top, and I hope that people uh, apologize and don't come in completely blank here. Um, this is basically the architecture that was shown by Torsten before. So you have 5G media streaming, you have the uh, reference points here, you have the interfaces here. So 5G, 5G media streaming, uh, over EMBS architecture, the basic principle is to add uh, EMBMS as a delivery option to distribute 5GMS based services. So now if you put this into architecture, you, you don't define any new interfaces, reference points, because you make use of XMB, user plane and control plane. You make use of the EMBMS APIs in the client, and then you just build this together, right? Um, now, why would you do this? There's a couple of ways how you can make use of this decomposed architecture. And we have documented in the annex a few options here. So the first assumption is that you have a 5G uh, content provider using different delivery architecture. So take yourself as, let's say, I take BBC because Richard was participating. And now you operate 
have content and you basically run an 5G MSAF and AS, and then you use now the 5G MNOs distribution network and somebody who offers a 5G broadcast network operation with a BMSC and distribute the content to, um, to UEs, right? And that UEs implement also a 5G broadcast LT MBMS receiver in a 5G MS client. So now you have interfaces to the MNO uh, through M40 and M50, or basically here uh, N6, um, on, on more on the, on, the, on the logical layer on the core, and you have the, the broadcast network operator. Now, I come back later how you can set up services, but that's basically one option. Another option is basically that the 5G MS network operator now offloads to the 5G uh, broadcast network operator. So in that case, again, you might have an application or uh, media provider. This one basically just provides um, interface and communicates with the um, 5G MS network operator who runs in a trusted domain AF and AS. But then the 5G MS network operator, for example, collaborates with somebody who provides a shared broadcast network and enables to offload content to the broadcast NNO. So that might be your uh, Super Bowl live service or nobody watches Super Bowl here, maybe uh, your World Cup or your keen song contest, right? So that, that data is potentially offloaded. Um, a third case is well, where this 5 GMS service operator owns both. So that might be the case as well. There could be cases where you um, own a 5G network and an MBMS distribution network. Again, the, the one owning the content would only communicate through 5 GMS uh, interfaces into the network. Um, and then there's another one where you basically have a 5G broadcast service provider who then collaborates with an MNO. So now you operating here on broadcast network, you own the 5 GMS DAF and AS as functions and then you basically using NEF to uh, use a 5 g network, but you also own the broadcast. And probably there are even more scenarios, but that's basically the idea that you have this modular ability of interface and reference points on the network to distribute um, also uh, business opportunities across. In all cases, you have seen that the, the UE didn't change. The UE was basically the same. And the UE is decomposed also in, in this modular interfaces to make use of the system. So now we have done a couple of scenarios. And the first one is relatively simple that you basically say, I exclusively deliver content through MBMS. So I have 5 GMS content, I just broadcast it. So in this case, you would not be uh, using, uh, sorry about this one, you would not use physically a unicast interface, everything that goes through broadcast. And this might be a case where you have received only devices as an example, uh, and these receive only devices might be just a subset of your devices, but potentially um, they are not unicast connected, um, be it for regulatory reasons, be it for reasons that there is no uplink available in the context or area. So then um, what we have done, and that's basically an extension to the, the first one is that you say, okay, let's at least augment the, uh, the, the pure broadcast distribution by a certain functionalities that are more on the uplink. Basically, you allow that you do consumption reporting. So at least you have information available in the network, how many uh, uh, devices are consuming the service. And you could go even further, you could do metrics reporting. You provide metrics on how well the service performs. So in, in this case, basically uh, you expose metrics from the EMBMS client or consumption reporting uh, metrics and report this using five GMS based functionalities as introduced by Torsten. And at least 10.2 and 10.3 are already more or less supported by our reference tools, thanks to all the work done by Daniel and Johan and Klaus and so on and so on. So the next one, and that is now hybrid services. That's documented in 5.10.5. The basic idea is that you have a hybrid service where you use a basic service available over EMBMS, but you have it also available on Unicast. And the, the service on Unicast may be richer, may be extended, it may add additional user experiences. And for the hybrid 
use cases initially. The content is statically provisioned. So on the network side, you provision it once, and then you make it available on different, different delivery networks. And there's a couple of instantiation of hybrid use cases. One is relatively simple. You do something interactive. The main content still goes through EMBMS exclusively, but you can basically interact with the service uh, by maybe getting some overlays to getting some um, information that then is delivered to you through Unicast. An important concept is session continuity, it's called, or coverage extension. There's a couple of different names for this. So here, the basic context is you're using EMBMS whenever it's available, but if you go outside of your coverage, you're moving to Unicast. So that could be, for example, you're going indoor, your broadcast reception gets um, lost, and now the client uh, basically switches to Unicast. And by service offering as done, this is all seamless. Uh, it's the client's decision to move to make this viewing. The other cases, you could do time-shifted viewing, right? So you basically go back in time for, on your live service, and now once you go into your time-shift viewing, you switch back to a, a unicast uh, way of getting the content delivered. And then there are other um, more uh, content or component replacements. So for example, you might have a targeted ad if you're in unicast, or uh, you might get other targeted content, regional content or specific content based on your filter, or you might replace your language and use unicast. And as I said, the service offering is static, the logic and smartness is included in the 5GMS client. Typically, in the play on the MSH, um, we had just a discussion before in our call. Um, this is a bit of a, there's an interesting implementation aspect here. There's different flavors. Uh, interesting. The second one, that's basically now the umbrella of uh, the, cup, the previous ones. And that's probably the most complex. And we started to look into this also already in the 5G uh, Mac reference tools, it's uh, in 10.5.6, you do dynamically provisioning the service. So the basic idea is you, you have resources of for the broadcast system, they're statically configured. You have your TMGIs maybe, or you have at least resources available, a spectrum, a frequency band and so on. Um, but you use EMBMS distribution only for services in high demand. And, and, and this high demand, there's a, there's a lot of flavors that are basically up to the content provider. High demand might also mean that resource and quality of service distributed to broadcast may be adjusted according to demand. So if you have a service that you know 95% of my users watch, you might change uh, not only that you put it on broadcast, you might also make it very robust or you make it very high quality and so on and so on. So uh, there is different flavors and you might dynamically provision. And demand may be now identified through using this consumption report. Then there's a couple of options and variants. One is basically, uh, do you do a one-to-one -one mapping between media service or 5GMS service and MBMS user service? Um, and then you just take on and off the media service, and the MBMS user service. But you could also do this, uh, that you dynamically map media services to user services. Um, or you only do it per component, that is another aspect. Um, so at the end, that basically requires the same client implementation because the client needs to understand the service offerings, but there is now an additional aspect that on the network, you also dynamically offer the, the content changes. And um, there's a complex workflow diagram, and I'm surely not gonna go through this in the details, but. There is a provisioning phase that provisions the content uh, more or less and, and make sure that you can offer, uh, mal so you, you, you initially offer your MBMS services being set up, but then a content might be only delivered over Unicast. And at the time when you detect high demand, you basically now provision that the service is moved to MBMS. And then, uh, or it, it's also available on MBMS. And then you have basically, uh, the client is announced this, and then you are aware of this, and the client now makes the selection. So it's um, clients that are able to receive EMBMS will move over. Those who are not able will stay on unicast, but that basically offloads demand. And if the demand on clients is uh, ceasing uh, and, and lowering, you can remove the service again. So there's a significant amount of dynamicity um, on the service provisioning as well. 
Um, just wrapping up on that one. So what is documented in 26501, which is the 5GMS, is a general description of what I discussed here in clause 46, 510, and Annex C. There is then stage three um, in the 5G media streaming stage three on the protocols. And there is um, there's basically a more detailed call flow. And we have extensions to support the different use cases on the APIs, the reference points, the consumption reporting. And then we have done small updates in the MBMS specs, basically to just to connect it to 5GMS. You can signal what you get is 5GMS. When we look into the implementations, what needs to be done, right? So we need to basically look into a 5GMS based service offering with consumption reporting. Um, this is the case, so over EMBML. No, no, so that is a general offering. So basically just on the reference tools, let's implement a, a very basic 5GMS based service offering. Then you need the client MBS APIs as well as M6 and 7 to support the different scenarios. So that is basically exposing demands, instructing to switch to EMBMS, um, basically also more way policies enforcing. We need improved media players to support multiple delivery networks, as well as dynamically selecting and steering off uh, the players to different networks. So if broadcast is available, you want to move the player to choose the broadcast incarnation. And another implementation is basically that there needs to be a dynamic service provisioning on the network side, taking into account the information and updating and changing service announcements. So as I said, I believe we are already in the process of implementing this in the reference tools. What would be excellent if you can uh, verify and validate what has been documented in release 17, um, and if you identify gaps, move it forward as well. So this is just as a, uh, a probably a prominent use case that is already um, started to be supported. Uh, I thank you for your attention and very open to comments and questions. Thank you.